I'll be somewhere. Amen. Oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I come, I come to receive, to receive my blessing. I'm patiently waiting. Lord, for the harvest, well, I've got the he, I've got the he, bruised 11 and 1, that kind of faith, faith to know mine, and it's mine, all mine, oh Lord, and oh Lord, said I've come to receive. I'm patiently waiting, waiting. Lord, for the harvest. Said I've got the heat, I've got the heat. Bruise 11 and 1. That kind of faith, faith to know mine. Said it's mine, all mine. Oh, Lord. Well, said I'm standing on this promise, I'm existing on your word. I everything that I speak, Lord, I believe you give it to me. Well, and it's the Father's a real good pleasure that the kingdom shall be mine, said it's mine, it's all mine, oh Lord, it's hard, and oh Lord, it's said I've come to receive, said I'm patiently waiting, Lord, for the harvest, Said, I've got the he, I've got the Hebrews 11 and that kind of faith, faith to know mine. Said, it's mine, all mine. Oh Lord, it's harvest. Well, I believe in him for great things. Lord, he promised me a long time ago. I know I'm going to get it because the Bible tells me so. Well, it is the Father's a real good pleasure that the kingdom shall be mine. Said it's mine. It's Oh my, oh Lord, it's hard and oh Lord, it's said I've come to receive, said I'm patiently waiting, Lord, for the harvest. Said, I've got the he, I've got the he, bruise 11 and that kind of faith, faith to know mine. Said, it's mine, all oh, mine. Oh Lord, it's harvest time. Amen, amen. I, I know God been better than that than somebody. Somebody just take a moment. And just give some of y'all that gave God a praise all year long. You ought to just take this Sunday right there to just thank God for what it is that he has done in your life. For surely God is good and beside him there is no other. I know you had about five or six pills that you took before you went to bed last night. But can I tell you, could not one of them pills assure you that you were going to wake up this morning? 
But along with those pills that you took, it had to be a guard somewhere that stopped by your house after he came by my house. And then he came by your house. And then he came by your house just to say, you know what? I know you don't deserve it, but because of my mercy and because of my grace, I'm going to give you another opportunity to get it right. And if you can't thank God for anything else this morning, thank God for one more opportunity. Lord, whatever I didn't get right on yesterday, I thank you for another opportunity opportunity to get it right today amen and we praise God for another opportunity that he has blessed us with I don't know about y'all but I'll be looking forward to Sunday morning I'll be looking forward to the opportunity where I can come together with my brothers and sisters because God, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. And he said in his word that where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, there am I in the midst of them. And in this day and age that we live, and I don't know no better place to be than in the presence of the Lord. So we're excited about that today to know that we are not just here assembled, but that God is right here in the midst of us. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty to set you free. We thank God for all of you that are here on this morning. Thank God as always for those of you that are watching us via live stream. So glad that out of all the places out there in the cyber church world that you decided to come to Jacksonville, Duval, and to worship with us on this morning. We're just so glad to have you here with us and we're prayerful that you'll be blessed by those things that are said. And if you by any stretch of the imagination have any questions about anything that is said or done, we pray that you would take that chance to reach out to us and we'll assure you you that if you have a Bible question, we'll do our best to give you a Bible answer. Amen. Amen. We had an, uh, a great opportunity on yesterday. God blessed us. Um, the leadership came together and we got together and we did the schedule and the calendar and everything for next year. Vision is good. You know that, right? Amen. The Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. But can I tell you something? Anybody can cast the vision, but somebody got to grab it and run with it you know it's it, it does it does no good to set a vision if there's not anybody to grab it and and to go with it so so i'm praying that we're going to have a vision cast and that there are going to be some people that are going to say you know what i'm not just going to take this thing and fold it up and put it in my bible but i'm going to take this thing and i'm going to live it out and i'm going to be the best child of god that i can be so that i can further the kingdom of god Amen. Let this be our hope going into the new year that we again forget all the other stuff. Just let me be the best that I can be for God so that I can serve him to the best of my ability. Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. If you have your Bible, I want you to be going as has already been read in Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 17. If you see Malachi, Obadiah and Ruth and first and second Samuel you in the wrong place I need you to come on down just a little bit further you'll come over after you get after Malachi you're gonna come over there in the New Testament and you're gonna see Matthew that ain't the one I want you to come over to another one Mark that ain't the one I want you to find Luke that's where we'll be at Mark Luke chapter 17 look at I got confused Luke chapter 17 uh, verse number 11 uh, concluding at verse number 19 the grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away but the word of our God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Bible says, And it came to pass, as they went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus! Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go and show yourself to the high priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a quiet voice, with a loud voice, he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And here's the kicker. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, in, in our turn, what other ten? Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give God glory, save this stranger. 
Verse 19, and he said to them, Arise, go your way, thy faith has made thee whole. I want to read it again for emphasis sake. Verse number 19, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Amen. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear wise and gracious Heavenly Father, it is once more and again a few of your handmaid servants have come to sit at your table. Father, some came for many things on this morning. Father, you know what we need and what we stand in the need of. So I pray at this time that you will be God in all of our situations. Somebody came seeking you, I pray that they'll find you. Somebody came burdened down with the cares of this world. I pray that you will lighten the load. Yeah. Father, I pray that you would hide me behind your cross. Yeah. Yeah. That no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. Yeah. And Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray that all those that love God say, Amen. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. I just want you to encourage. I don't want you to encourage nobody else this morning because this word going to be for you. This word, ain't, this word ain't for nobody else this morning. I just want you to encourage yourself this morning. And I don't want you to say it with a quiet voice. I want you to say it with a loud voice. You ready? Repeat after me. I shall, I shall be made whole. Be made whole. Yes, sir. Is that good right there? Yes, sir. I, I need, somebody need to say it again for emphasis sake. Say it. I shall. I shall. Be made, whole. be made whole. Here we have 10 lepers. The Bible said, all are suffering from the same disease. All facing a tragic death that is soon to come. There was no cure for this disease. All of them were outcasts from the temple. They couldn't even come into the temple. And in this day and age that they lived, if you had leprosy, before you even came in the vicinity of another person, you had to holler out, unclean, unclean, to let the people know that you were not pure and that they needed to get away from you. They were outcasts from their families. They had no communication with the public. They had no hope for tomorrow. They had nothing to look forward to. They had distorted faces. They had body parts that were falling off. And one of the first things that would go would be the nose. And the nose is just lying there flat and the lips would begin to drape and the teeth and the gums would be exposed and the lips would hang down distorted faces with disease on the inside and then the bones would begin to rot and they would begin to break off and they became brittle and they just began to break to break off the parts of the body. It was a horrible sight. It's like the skin becomes mummy like like an infection just consumes the body. It takes the body parts farthest from the heart first, the fingers and, and the toes, and they go first, and then it just keeps eating away until finally you're all consumed. At first, you know, Naaman was a leper in the Bible. Y'all remember Naaman, don't you? A famous general in the Syrian army, and he hid his leprosy, the Bible said. You can hide sin for a while, church, but before it's over, it's going to take over everything. It gets in your feet. Come on, somebody. It gets down in your walk. It gets down in your talk. It gets in every action of your life. You begin to be there. You can hide your sin at first, but it takes more and it takes more to hide it after a while. A little bit of the old you starts dying that you had the conviction that you had a heart for God, that you love God. It just consumes you and it gets in every part of who you are and a little bit of you begins to die more and more every single day. The disease makes it very clear that you are a leper and at some point they cannot cover it anymore. Church, the leper colonies were there because the people were banished and there was no cure. So they separate themselves and they will live with only those that were just like them. The final thing that sin does to a person 
is that it causes them to pull away from all the good people in their life. All of the people that love God, all of the people who pray and they want to live with people who have the same disease or sins as they have and they feel comfortable. They no longer feel comfortable in that world where there's life and life more abundantly, but they're more comfortable with those that have the same kind of spiritual disease that they have. The lepers here. These 10 men in this horrible condition hear about Jesus is coming through town. Right. And faith church comes by hearing. And when you, they heard, when they heard the leper healer was coming through town, I don't know what they heard. Maybe they heard that he had touched the leper because he did in a previous chapter. He touched the leper. You know, Jesus always touching the untouchable. And maybe they started out saying, maybe they said he's no respecter of persons. Maybe they said somebody called him the great physician and we got to get over there to him. But whatever it was that they heard, that made them leave their leper colony and run out to meet Jesus. Ten of them. Without their noses and faces, some of them without ears, some of them with a bloody stub of what used to be an arm coming out. To meet Jesus. But they're running to Jesus. Ten of them coming straight to him. They come to Jesus. Their eyes would have been turned cotton at this time. Because one of the things that happens is they go blind. A leper would go blind. Zombies like zombie like people just walking around. You ever seen the show The Walking Dead? That is kind of what it would look like. And their sores are all over their body. A horrible situation. And they turned out and said. Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus said to them a strange instruction. He never told anybody who got a, a, another healing or miracle. This man who was healed after 30 days at the pool of Bethesda, he did not say, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't say to the other people, the blind man, the lame man that he healed. He did not say, go and show yourself to the high priest. But the thing that he said to these men is, I want you in your condition. It's different from every other thing that I've done. It's different from every other condition. I want you to go and show yourself to the high priest. Yeah. What he was saying was, a doctor may not be able to help you. A counselor may not be able to help you. You need to go to the house of the Lord. You need to go to the temple. You need to get under the high priest. You need to hear the word of the Lord. You need some spiritual help. Come on, somebody. You, you've tried everything else, but now it's gotten in every part of your life. And the only thing that's going to change your life is to get into the temple, to get into the house of God to get into the presence of God so that God can make you whole once again. And I love the scripture church. The Bible says as they went, they were healed. Nobody got healed just standing there looking like a bump on the log. The Bible says that as they went, they were healed. And you just start coming back to church and coming back to God and coming back to the house of the Lord. It's just as you keep coming. It wasn't instant. It wasn't total restoration. But as they went, the Bible said they were healed. I believe that as they were going, they had some sores that began to dry up on their body. Some, some began to happen to them. They knew at that moment, I've been healed. I've been blessed. I've been made whole. Oh, happy day. Jesus has washed my sins away. Went back to the house. Mama, look at me. I've been healed. I met the man that was able to make me whole again. Church, they never thought they get to touch each other again. But then the scripture said that one of them, one of them didn't go home. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back and fell at the feet of Jesus and began to worship him. Now I want to preach this just for a moment because God cannot resist leper worship. How does a leper worship? The Bible says that there was a man when Jesus came off the mountain 
who had leprosy on another occasion, who fell at his feet in his leprous condition, and he worshipped. What is he worshiping with? What does that sound like? Thank you, Lord, that my nose is gone. Thank you, Lord, that my skin is now mummified. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have fingers and toes. I can't walk and I can't hardly get around. But thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he is leper worship. Leper worship is not praising God for what he's done. Leper worship is when you praise God simply because of who he is. So many of us, we praise God when he meets our needs and you thank God for the house and you thank God for the car and you thank God for the promotion. But when are you going to get to the point where, Lord, I thank you for just being God and being God all by yourself. God, I thank you for making a way in my life. You are my savior. You are my healer. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. You are my strong tower. My strength and my comfort. Church, pain is real. Hurt is real. Life is real. And when it hits, it turns your life ugly. And in those moments... You don't worship God because of what he's done or what he's doing. You worship God simply because of who he is. And every now and then, church, every now and then, you need to give God your leper worship. Amen, somebody. You need to give God your leper worship, not because he checked the boxes off on your prayer list, but you give him leper worship because why? Number one, you are my redeemer. Number two, you are my Lord. And every now and then, the whole church just need to break out in leper worship and say, if I never get another prayer answer, I want you to know that you are still worthy you are still the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world I'll still look to you as the heal from which coming my help my help coming from the Lord God Almighty You are worthy because you are my soon coming king you are El Shaddai Elohim you are worthy God And when he begins to worship, the other nine went home. And listen to me carefully. It's very important to understand, church, the power of worship. Because the other nine went home, but the effects of leprosy had taken some stuff from them. The effects of leprosy, they didn't get their toes back. They didn't get their ears back, their nose back. They still look like what they had been through. But your Bible says that when this man fell at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him, Jesus looked at the man and said, be thou made whole. Church, the word whole in here is interpreted sozo, which means to be complete. It means to be unbroken. It means to be undivided and lacking nothing. So many of us in here have lost so much. But church, let me tell you, when you get caught up in the praises of God and when you begin to worship God, God says, this is how you get all your losses back. When you turn your pain into praise, I know that it hurt and that you have an emptiness on the inside of you, but there ought to be something on the inside of you that can still praise God for what he's done. I am in control. I am God. Even when your life is not good, I am still good. And I'm going to bring you through this. Tell somebody I'm coming out this thing with victory. It can make you whole, church. Our God is a restorer of lost things. He said in his word that I restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten up. God said, I'll destroy. Somebody said, it's time for me to get my stuff back. God said, I'm going to restore unto you those things that you have lost. Come on, somebody. God is worthy not because of what he is doing, but because he is God. 
He said, your faith has made you whole. The word whole church means no lacking parts. Nothing is unbroken or undivided. Nothing is undamaged. All parts are restored. And he's worshiping church. Can you see him now worshiping God and his nose coming back on his face? What would that be like, church, as he's worshiping? And maybe he came up worshiping God with one nub of a hand and had one little finger. But as he's worshiping God, boom, you got another one popping up. And boom, you got another one popping up. And now, I was walking up and I might have been missing some toes on his feet. But now that I'm caught up in the praise and I'm worshiping God, I got toes that I didn't have before I got here simply because I'm worshiping God. And can I tell you something, church? You may not have came in here missing no limbs this morning. You may not have came in here in a desperate or a dire situation. But whatever you need from God, you're not going to get it by sitting there looking like a bump on the log. You're going to get it by worshiping God. You're going to get it by getting caught up in the praises of God and worshiping Him because of who He is. Your faith has made you whole. Worship is the answer, church. Anger is not the answer. Worship is the answer. Feeling sorry for yourself and sick and dying into a depression is not the answer, but worship is the answer. And when you begin to worship, God says, I cannot resist leper worship. I cannot resist people that are going through hell but they focus on who I am and not what is being done to them. But what I love about Jesus and what he can do for us, he can say, I know you went through it, but you're not going to look like what you've been through the rest of your life. Oh, somebody I encouraged somebody this morning and said, child, I don't look like what I've been through. Somebody said, Preacher, I've been to hell and back. I got the t-shirt to prove it. Preacher, I was down on my luck. Preacher, my back was against the wind. I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. I didn't know how I was going to make it out of the situation. I walked through the fire. I've been through the flood. But I thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. And see, people come in, and they don't even understand. They come in, they say, well, those people over here, they got a perfect life. Look at the preacher over there. He don't know nothing about no real life. And look at all those people over there in the front, those people over there jumping and praising God. They don't know nothing about being down. I, I didn't have a daddy. Didn't know what nobody there to encourage me. And it's not that we ain't been through similar things. It's just that we don't look like what we've been through. Because when you worship God because of who he is and you begin to restore the father that you didn't have, God begins to restore the brokenness in your life. All of the things that tried to destroy you, God will turn those things around for your good. Your worship is powerful. It's able to heal you. It's able to restore you. They, they come into churches, people come into churches, and they see people. But the truth is, can I tell you something? All around you, even though people are saying amen, and even though they're clapping, many of us are messed up. Come on, man. Yeah, the truth about it. You don't know. It's so easy for us to make a preconceived notion about somebody. Simply because you see how a person is driving. Or you see how a person is dressed or where they live in that. But can I tell you? A person can have all of that and still not have a peace of mind. A person can have all of that stuff and still not be able to get a peaceful night's sleep. You can have all of that stuff. But church, can I tell you? You're going to have to get to a point in your life where you don't trust in riches. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But I shall remember the name of the Lord. And can I tell you the only way you're going to get out of 
what you're in right now to where God wants you to be is when you stop trying to be so sophisticated in your worship to God and stop trying to be so politically correct and be like this man that fell down on the ground. I don't care what nobody else is saying. I got to praise God because this might be my last opportunity. Glory be to God. You don't know people in here been addicted. You don't know people in here have lost so many, so many things. But we don't look like what we've been through. But we got to, you, 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 in the church he said, the Bible said that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. And can I tell you just how good God is? God is not just good enough to sustain you in the fire. God will burn the folk up that try to throw you in the fire. Because the Bible says that the, the, he had told them to heat that thing up seven times hotter. That it consumed the people that were throwing them in. But the thing is, he didn't hear just walking around. Look, 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 if, if, if I could hear them this morning, I believe they'd be saying something. I will bless the Lord at all times, for he is good. His mercy endured forever. I'm going to worship him because of who he is. And because they held on to God, because their faith was in God. Can I tell you, a man came, he said, did we not throw three men in the fire? And lo, I see four. And one of them looked like the son of God. Can I tell you, you may be in the fire right now, but you're not in the fire by yourself. God is right there with you. He's right there by your side. Some of us, some of us church have been through the fire. Some of you are going through the fire right now. But when God gets through with you, I came to tell you this morning, when God gets through with your family, when God gets through with your life, when God gets through with your marriage, when God gets through with your home, it is not going to look like what it is that it has been through. It don't mean that you won't go through it. It just means that when you come out, you're going to be made whole. He doesn't want you. To look like what you've been through. That's why. That's why when the prodigal son was on his way home. The father took off running. And covered him. And said. I don't want you to look like what you've been through. You've been to the pig pen. You stink right now. And you look kind of bad. But I'm going to cover you. Put these shoes on y'all. Bring the robe out. And put it on. Put a ring on his finger. Came back looking like a businessman, you know. <laughs> Had a ring on his finger. Business ring on his hand. He came back like he had never left. Oh, somebody say, I'm back like I never left. I'm back like I... And what the... That, they probably had to ask, where have you been? Where you been all this time? I heard you was in a hog pen. See, that's the thing with folk. Folk always think they're going to see you where they last saw you. When you was in the hog pen the last time I saw you, you're always going to be in the hog pen. You was down on your luck the last time I saw you, you always going to be down on your luck. But how many of y'all know that where I am right now is not where I'm going to end up? The Bible said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, to give you a hope, to give you a future, and an expected end. You stay and you look bad. All right. But I'm going to cover you. Church, it ain't no quick fix for something like that. But what I'm trying to tell you is I don't know how. But if you'll just take that pain and turn it into worship. God knows how to restore your soul. To not just stop the leprosy from spreading and then you just limp away. But to so heal you that when you look back on it, you can't help but to give God the glory. Somehow, that in the middle of all that I'm going through, God was able to identify with me. 
with what I was dealing with. And here restore those loved ones to you, church. Here restore a church. Somebody just say, let's do that for me. You don't smell like what you've been through, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would expect to smell the fire. You would expect to smell some sin, chair, some kind of burn on you. But that's just the kind of God that we serve. God said, I love you too much to bless you out of your mess and have you walking around looking like a mess. God said, I'm going to bless you so profoundly that won't nobody be able to tell how it is that you got out of it. And when somebody asks you, you won't be able to take the credit for it. You'll say, all glory is due to the God of heaven. This man has sense enough Come on, to be thankful. Yeah, he has sense enough to be grateful. Mm -hmm. And I wish that we would get the mindset of this leper. Because I know that we all think that we're pretty good. We ain't bad as everybody else. We're doing pretty good. You know, we're doing all that we can. And, you know, I, I ain't cussed nobody out this week. Last week was a little trouble. You know, I, I, I you know... I, I lied yesterday. I haven't lied today. I'm doing pretty good today. You know, whatever. You know, and we think like that. But I wish that we would get to the point that when we come into this place to worship God, you will recognize that the air that you breathe that don't belong to you. You will recognize that the clothes on your back, they don't belong to you. You will recognize that the activity of your limb, it don't belong to you. Everything that you got, you got it from the great God of heaven. And God, I just want to take this opportunity to bless you for what you have done in my life. Because if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, church, we would have been consumed a long time ago. We would have been consumed a long time ago, but thank God that he met us where we were, but he did not leave us where it was that he found us. That's the testimony of this leper church. The way that I met him was not the way that he left me. There are people in this room right now that got some leper situations going on. Can I tell you that along with every sin is a spirit that's attached to it. And that there are so many people that think they are just, you know, it may be a little sin that I'm dabbling in. But church, if you're not careful, that spirit will get attached to you. And you just won't lie every now and then. You have the spirit of lying. You won't just be mean every now and then. You have a mean spirit. You won't be able to love anybody. You won't be able to know how to treat anybody when you have that stuff on the inside of you. That's why we got to say it every day. Lord, if there be anything in me that's not like this. Lord, I want you to remove it. Lord, I want you to take it away because I want to be blessed in the city. I want to be blessed in the field. I want to be blessed in my going out and in my coming in. And I know that you said in your word that you cannot dwell in an unclean temple. So, Lord, I want you to clean me out and make me new so that I can worship you. Because when you have all of that stuff in you, and you try to worship God, it's not acceptable. Because how can you honestly say that you love and worship the one and true living God and you hate people that you see on a daily basis? How, how can you honestly worship God with your whole heart and with your whole mind when you hating people? When you can't get over certain things that have happened in your life. But that's the beauty about coming into the presence of God. Because what you ain't got to do with God is that you ain't got to put up no front. You ain't got to try to fake when you come to God. Because God knows who you are. The Bible says that the very hairs on your head, they are numbered. God knows exactly who you are. And I wish that we would just get butt naked with ourselves. And say, Lord, I ain't trying to cover up. But Lord... Lord, I want you to see me as I am and clean me up. Everybody come to church with a mask. I ain't talking about the one that's covering your mouth and your nose. Everybody comes to church covering up something. 
Because we want to put up these appearances that we are whole when we're not really whole. It's one thing for, to come in to hear for an hour and a half or two hours on Sunday and say, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing this word. And, 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 you, know, and you, you can sing a lot better than you can tell a lot. And, and, you know, there are some of us, we've gotten so used to keeping up appearances and we know all the protocol and, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm too blessed to be stressed and all of this kind of stuff. But we need to get out of that cliche stuff and get down into the real in depth of worshiping God. When you lose yourself, when you lose control of all of those things that are holding you back and say, Lord, I'm going to give it to you because this might be the last opportunity. That I have. Yes. Come on. Worship is powerful. Yes. This man was made whole because he worshiped God. I wonder what God can do in your life if you would just worship him. I wonder what God could do in your life if you didn't wait till Sunday morning to begin to worship him. But if you welcome God into your home. And you find a place and a time, even in your own house, to worship God and to give God the praise that is due to him. The reason why a lot of people can't praise God on Sunday is because they ain't praising God on Monday. They ain't praising God during the week. The reason why a lot of folk don't know how to give God glory is because they're not giving God glory through the week. You ought not wait until you get here to magnify the name on the Lord. Every day of your life, you ought to lift up his name. You ought to bless him because of what he's doing in your life. They went. The Bible says they were made whole. As they went. Can I tell you, God ain't going to do everything for you. You're going to have to go by yourself sometimes. Sure. Yeah. Everything is not just going to come to you and be all gift wrapped and shaped up nice and put at your death step. But there are sometimes, sure, you're going to have to get up and make a move for yourself. It ain't going to do you no use to pray to God, Lord, I want a new job. Lord, I want a promotion. You ain't filled out the first job application. It ain't going to do you no good. Lord, I want to lose weight, but you ain't been to the gym. You ain't trying to change your diet. Lord, I want to do this. And Lord, I want to do that. But you are not preparing yourself. I don't know about you, but I want to prepare prepare myself to be blessed by the God of heaven. So I'm going to create a space in my life where I can worship him. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says the hour is going to come and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. To worship God in truth simply means to worship God as it is aligned and recorded in his word. Yeah. But to worship God in spirit means that you got the right mindset. You can't be thinking about the oxtails that's in your stove while you're worshiping God. You can't be thinking about that potter's house place. That you, come on, somebody. You can't be thinking about that shut them down plate that you're about to get here when you leave God. You can't be thinking about all the folk on your job that's trying to get you fired while you're in here worshiping God. You can't think about the folk in your family that's giving you a hard time while you're in here worshiping God. But when you come in the door, you got to leave all that stuff on the outside. Lord, I know what I'm going through. It's going to be waiting on me when I get back. But when I go in here, I'm going to get strengthened so that I can handle what's coming at me tomorrow. And what I love about God, he didn't say you can be made whole. Be made whole. Can I tell you, church, we serve a God that is able to speak directly to your situation. God ain't like you going to a doctor and they say, well, you know what? We're going to give you this and I want you to take it for a certain amount of day and we're going to see how it works. Let me tell you, when God touch you, you've been touched. When God heals your body, you've been healed. When God makes a way for you, a way has been made. That's why he said in his word, I open doors that no man is able to shut. And God says, I'll shut doors that no man is able to open because I'm just that kind of God. I got the power to do it. 
as he said in his word, exceeding and abundant above all that you could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You too can be made whole. I mentioned this and I say it again. Some of us, if we be honest about it right now, cannot be made whole because we're still struggling with things from childhood. Many of us have been afflicted and dealt with things, traumas and different things that you never got help for. So now they are playing out later on in your life. Yes, and you're not really able to love anybody because you never got the love that you should have got. You don't know how to treat anybody because you were never really treated in the way that you should have been treated. But can I tell you that God is able to make those excuses non-valid? Because God is saying, even though all of those things happen to you, if you would just give me an opportunity to come in your life, God says, I'll take your feet out of the miry clay, and I'll set your feet upon a rock to stand, and I'll establish your going. God says, I'll come and I'll pick you up out of whatever it is that you are going through. I'll clean you up. I'll make you new, and I'll give you a brand new start. That's why he said in this word that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature all things have passed away. Behold, all things shall become new. God is able to give you a brand new start. Yes, he is. He's able to make you whole and complete if you would but be a true worshiper. If you would but be a true worshiper. You know, we got to get out of this because, you know, I hear sometimes people will come and say it, say it to me. If you said this, I ain't talking about you. But, you know, and people will come and I'll say you know, people are coming there and say, Preacher, oh, you almost made me get up today. <laughs> oh, Preacher, oh, oh, you was preaching so good. Oh, I just want to get and do it. What you waiting on? <laughs> if God has been good to you, and if God has opened doors in your life, and if God has made ways for you, you ought not be ashamed of your testimony about what it is that God has done in your life. Nobody else may not understand it, but that's between you and your God. So, so I got to be free to worship with all the eyes that are on me. What's she saying amen for? What's she doing all that clapping for? What's she, I can hardly hear the preacher. What's she, I, well, move to another seat and find you somewhere else to sit. You may not understand why they're worshiping God, but if you had good enough sense, you'd be out praising them because the same God that's been making a way for them is the same God that made a way for you. So I recognize that there are a lot of us in the church uh -huh. that would be considered the nine. Watch out. Watch out. Because they got blessed and they went home. They didn't show no kind of emotion. They didn't praise God. They didn't thank God for what it was that they done. They just got their blessing and they went on home. But there was one that said, you know what? Out of every place I had been yes, sir. trying to get healed, uh -huh. out of every other thing that I had tried, trying to change my condition, and nothing was ever able to help me. And now that Jesus has cured my condition and made me whole, I'd be a fool not to give God praise. I'd be a fool not to worship God. I'd be a fool not to lift up his name. what he has done and the testimony to those in the high court was he's able he's able to do those things that others think are impossible some of you are struggling with some situations right now that you feel like are impossible but can I tell you with me these things are impossible but with God all things are possible through Jesus Christ. He can make you whole, church. He can clean you up. He can give you a brand new start. 
if you would, but give him the opportunity to work in your life. And that's why he said in his word, he said that God inhabits the praises of his people. Mm -hmm. You know, we were not created just to dress up in our Sunday go to meeting clothes. You better say so. And come here and do our little fashion strut, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> How you doing this morning? Glory to God. You know. You better say the so. Bible says that God created us. He created a church yes. to lift up his name. Yes. Can I tell you, the frogs were made to do something. And if you listen closely at night, you can hear them doing it. <laughs> the cows were created to do something. You hear them? <laughs> Every goat out there still bad, just like God created him to do. But then we intelligent beings that God has made just won't do what God has called us to do. I understand what God meant in his word when he said that it grieved him in his heart that he had ever made man. God said, little dogs around here just doing what I tell them to do, obeying me, and y'all over here eating fruit two seconds that I left the God. <laughs> the very opportunity that you had to fall, you took it. Church, can I tell you something? Maybe you didn't, you didn't know this, but I want to put you on, on alert. You're not perfect. Can I tell you that even though all of us are striving for the mastery, that every single one of us in here, as Elder Denson so often says, got issues? We got some real things that we're dealing with. And our pseudo-Christianity keeps us from sharing that with the masses. But if we be real with ourselves, we just one slip away from being in a mental institution. You just one slip away from losing your mind with everything that you've had to go through and everything that you've had to deal with. And so many of us are going through life as if we have it all together. As if Somewhere in your house, you got a ticket punched. You know, you got it sitting in your Bible in the crevice, you know, whatever. So when you get to the floor, you're just going to reach in there and pull it out so you can get on the train. Can I tell you, we got to get to the place. And let me tell you, God will never be able to bless us until we get to the place where we be honest with ourselves. And we be honest enough to say, you know what, God, I ain't got it all together. God, as a matter of fact, sometimes I have to look in the mirror and make sure I still am who I am because of the choices. Because as the word says to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it becomes a sin. And Lord, I know what your word says. Lord, I know what it is that you command of me. But because I have this fleshly side of me, there is a greater desire sometimes to do those things that you are not pleased with and to go away from those things that you have commanded for me to do. And that is why you got to come here not every other Sunday with a praise on your mind. You got to come here every Sunday. And let me tell you, church, sometimes, sometimes you, you can't be so, sometimes you just got to release yourself, church. Lord, I'm giving it all to you. This is your praise, Lord. This is your worship. You owe it to him, church, to praise him and to worship him, to thank him for what it is that he has done in your life. Be like the one that is just so grateful for what it is that God has done in your life yes. that you just got to take a moment to tell God thank you. You just got to take a moment to tell him thank you for what it is that he had done. Can I tell you, had he joined the group with the other nine, he would have been blessed, but he wouldn't have been whole. He would have got a little tingling feeling on the inside. But he would not have been made whole. Yes, sir. And again, picture this in your mind, church. I'm talking about a leper. And as he's worshiping God, 
skin is covering the bones once again. It's kind of like when he went down to that valley of dry bones. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and he said, can these dry bones live? Yeah. And that valley that was once a dry bones, yeah. full of dry bones, yeah. when he looked again, it was like an army that had risen up and they were standing up. That's just how God is able to bring life back into your situation. I know you thought it was over. I know you thought it was done. I know you've been walking around because you think nothing else can happen. But can I tell you that even in your dead situation, God can breathe life into it. He can breathe life, church even into your dead situations, yeah. and you will be able to live again. Yeah. Like you'll be able to live again, church, yeah. once God has done it in your life. So I just believe that by chance, by stretch of the imagination, there's somebody here this morning that is not whole. Can I tell you, I begin with myself. I'm not whole. I'm still on the part of the wheel. He's working on me, y'all. He's working on me. And he sees areas in my life where, you know, preacher, if you're going to really be who I want you to be, I got to put you back on the wheel so I can shape some of this stuff out. Come on, man. And if you're going to really be who God wants you to be, church, he got to get you back on that wheel and get some of that stuff out of you because if we be honest, we got some imperfections on the inside of us. That's why he got to get us back on the wheel and to do a work on us. Some of us need to let go this morning and let God change you. Stop trying to control everything. Stop trying to direct it. He's already said in his word that it is not in man to direct his own step. Let God order your step. Let God create a path for you to go. And if you follow that yellow brick road that God lay out for you, you will get to where it is that you want to be. You can be made whole, church, through your praises to God worship. God has not made this thing difficult, church. No, think so. Simply worshiping him. Giving him what's due to him. Amen. Because again, how many of y'all know with assurance that you're going to have an opportunity to praise him next Sunday? God forbid, how many of us know with assurance that we're going to leave out of here and some freak thing is going to happen. And we never have opportunity to come back to this place. But when we leave here, if nobody is able to say anything else, let them be able to say they were a true worshiper. Yes. They worship God Amen. with everything that they had. Sometimes you might have seen tears streaming down their eyes. They were just worshiping God. Sometimes they couldn't say nothing because sometimes, can I tell you, all you might be able to do is just. Yes. Yes. Any of y'all ever found yourself in that situation where you found yourself just depleted of words to be able to use? And you say, Lord, I may not be able to construct it the way I want to say it to you right now. So, Lord, all I can do is just. Yes. Lord, you know what I'm dealing with. And you know what I'm going through. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart and renew that right spirit within me. Do you want to be made whole this morning? Yes. That's not something for you to play around with. Do you really want to be made whole? If you do, you'll start giving God the glory that he deserves. You'll become a true worshiper of God. When you come into this place, your mind won't be on who's looking at you. Your mind won't be on what you got to face tomorrow. It won't be on what you went through yesterday. But your mind will simply be on God has blessed me with this hour. He has blessed me with this moment. And he has blessed me with this opportunity. And I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm going to praise God. I'm going to worship him. With all of my heart. With all of my soul. With all of my mind. And with all of my strength. You can't worship God truthfully without having some kind of emotion in your church. And there are a lot of people that have lacked emotion in their worship God. You know, a, a lot of people just good enough.
Can't say it out loud. But there's some of us that say, you know what? I, I just can't hide what it is that God has done in my life. You know what? I think there are a lot of people that are ashamed of what it is that God has done in their life. Because we talk about Jesus while we're here, but when we leave here, Jesus be the last thing on our mind. But everywhere you go, you ought to be letting somebody know, hey, man, I was lost. I was down. I was on my way to a devil's hell. I wasn't fit to live, and I was too scared to die. And I thank God that he did not leave me where I was, but he came out there. And he rescued me. God is throwing out the lifeline to somebody this morning. You don't have to drift away. You don't have to be lost. You don't have to be condemned in your present condition. But God is able right now, not tomorrow, right now, right now to make a difference in your life. He's able right now. To the utmost church, Jesus saves. He's able right now to make you new. He's able right now to make you whole. If you would, but give him that opportunity in your life. I love God, church. And I'm glad that he so loves me. Can I tell you that in spite of us, he loves us. The Bible says that God commended his love toward us and that while we were all right, he died for us. He gave his life for us. The Bible says that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is standing at the door of your heart this morning. He's knocking. You need to let him come in. You tried everything else that you can try. Every other way, every other avenue that you've tried, and it has not been able to help you. How about you give Jesus a try? Amen. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Yes, Somebody might say, man, she can make a bad cake. I won't know until I taste it. Somebody can tell you how good God is all day long, but until you try him for yourself, until you experience him for yourself, and my young people in here, can I tell you, you can't live off of the faith of your mama and your daddy and your grandmama. You're going to have to get to a place where you can establish a faith for yourself, where you can trust God for yourself, but can I tell you, mama ain't going to always be here to pray for you on him, but daddy, grandmama ain't going to always going to be here to pray for you, but but you're going to have to learn how to worship God for yourself to receive the blessings of God. Church, God is able to save you, to deliver you even right now. If you would, but give him the opportunity. Somebody needs to come to Jesus today. You've done everything else except try Jesus. Though we say in the song, try Jesus. He's all right. He's all right. Anybody else can testify with me this morning that he's all right? He may not come when you want him. But he's always right on time. He ain't never early. And he ain't never late. He's always right on time. He's right on time for somebody this morning. He's going to meet you where you are. But he's not going to leave you where it is that he finds you. Come this morning to Jesus without hesitation, without fear in your mind, for he is truly able to clean you up and to give you a brand new start. Come to him this morning. You've heard already what it is, the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. My question is now, do you believe that he lived, that he died, and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand? Do you believe that? That's good. Now, are you willing to believe that with all of your heart to the point that you are willing to repent of your sins? Changing your mind that changes your actions. Changing your mind that changes your thought pattern and your decisions. Repent of your sins 
And after that, confessing Christ as your Savior. You know, there's a lot of saviors out here. That's why you got to confess Christ as your Savior. You can't say Muhammad is your Savior and claim Jesus. You can't claim that Buddha is your Savior and claim Jesus. You got to remit that Jesus is the Son of the living God. Can I tell you, I've had the opportunity to go to the place where they say that our Savior was late yeah. when nobody in there. Come on. <laughs> when nobody in there. Yes, sir. Somebody was, he was gone fishing, I believe. He was gone. When nobody home. <laughs> I can take you, if we were to go overseas right now, we can go to a memorial that's going to show you where Buddha was late. <laughs> I can go up to Chicago, Detroit, whichever one it is, and I can show you where Elijah Muhammad is laid. And I can tell you what, guess what? He ain't got up yet. He's still laying right there where he is. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. He's still laying right there. Where he's at? Assalamu alaikum, salam. Yeah, you know, you know he, he's still laying right there where he's at. But there's only one, and that's what makes Christianity distinct out of all world religions. We are the only one that has a risen Savior. And just like he got up, you can get up out of your condition, out of your situation. You've heard the word, believe the same, repent of your sins and confess Christ as your Savior, and ultimately be led to the point as they were on the day of Pentecost when they requested of Peter and the rest of the brethren what it was that they needed to do in order that their souls might be saved, he told them to repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for and to obtain the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord adds to the church daily such as should be saved. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, you're already a child of God, but you're saying, preacher, I'm lacking in parts of my life. I'm not as close to God as I used to be. I'm lacking in that relationship. I don't feel whole right now. Let us pray for you. The Bible says truly that the prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. And can I tell you, there are some things that we can make it through in this life by ourselves. But can I tell you, as the, the, the old movie was, we all gonna need somebody to lean on. We all gonna need somebody yes. to go to God on our behalf. Yes. We're gonna need somebody to intercede for us at some point in our life. Mm -hmm. He's able, church, to save you today if you'll give him the opportunity. So the opportunity has been extended to you, my brother and my sister. I know in your mind right there, you're saying, preacher, well, give me a little more time. I ain't got no time to give you. Come on. <laughs> I know you're saying, preacher, my New Year's resolution is I'm going to give my life to Jesus. Who said you're going to be here this evening? Yeah. That's why he told me in his word, he said, don't say, well, we on tomorrow we'll go to such and such a place and, and do such and such a thing. But say if it's the Lord's will, and the creek don't rise. You know? if, it's, if it's the Lord's will, I'll go and do such and such a thing. You don't know what God's will is for your life. All you know is this opportunity that you have right now. Right now. Take advantage of your right now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be just like a tree that's planted by the waters. And I shall not be moved. You know that I shall, 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 I shall not be moved. I shall, 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 I shall not be just like a tree that's planted by the waters. And I 